This is the start of it right here. My name is Colter. I'm a drummer. I'm 26. I've been playing drums for 10 years. This is my first band, Kamikaze Birthright, playing our first show, A Battle of the Bands, that we ended up winning. I live in Chicago now, and in every large city, there's a local paper with a section for musicians seeking other musicians. This section is divided into guitar player wanted, singer wanted, bass player wanted, and drummer wanted. So I started calling ads, playing with musicians, and looking for a band to fit in with. So like, what's the direction for eyesight? Do you want us looking at you, or do you want us looking into the camera? People try to say that like, you know, you know, fucking music can change the world and, and all this shit, but that's, that's fucking stupid. Of course it can't. Can I cuss on this? Yeah. Okay, sweet. Politically, I mean, just just the fight songs and anthems and everything like that. It can be used as just like as, as propaganda. It can be used as um, you know to get, lift somebody's spirits up. Everything. It's it's just such a powerful tool. The other bands that I played in, um, some are in jail, some are dead, some are uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee. For all we know, music might start a war one day or something. <laughs> The following are my experiences looking for a band in Chicago. That kind of, I love that kind of shit, man. Dude. Hey, I uh, saw your number in the reader, said you were looking for a drummer. Uh, give me a call, my number is 317-0973. And uh, I'm a pretty hardcore thrashy drummer, so uh, I don't know, maybe we can get together and jam and uh, see what happens later. They were looking for a hardcore thrashy drummer. <laughs> drummer sought for? You ever heard of a drummer sought for? Excuse me? Drummer sought for? Does that make any sense? Sought for? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I guess if you rest the sentence. Drummer sought for established in oh. the <laughs> Everyone knows you have to practice and like, uh, you know, practice your scales and write good songs and stuff, but I think a lot of people don't realize the other part that goes into it, you know, what else yeah, goes into it, like the actual, like, finding people to play with. Music attracts a certain kind of people and dealing with those personalities is pretty interesting sometimes. Boy, you guys got a lot of shoes here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I saw this man. You guys are going to love this man. This is what, you know, this is what makes all this worth it. Maggot twat. Okay, they're playing in the suburbs. Bass player's got like um, um, tin foil around his head, you know. Drummer is a puppet. <laughs> fucking totally go nuts, man. I mean, it's just a crazy fucking band. Mm -hmm. A fucking greatest thing I've ever seen, man. Best drummer I've ever seen. And he was a puppet. Was. So I'm try some improvising, you know. <laughs> Seven day job, fucking work for a metal company factory. ACDC, fucking Highway to Hell, fucking Back in Black, fucking Black Sabbath, fucking War Pigs, Iron Man, fucking shit like that, you know. Man, uh, fucking Led Zeppelin, God knows how many fucking, you know, Cashmere, Trample Underfoot, fucking, I mean, just. Okay. Those are songs. People are fucking jamming that shit. Why? Because it's classic. Why is it classic? Because it like spoke, it speaks to almost anyone, even if you don't, don't like fucking Led Zeppelin. And you hear that one of their songs. Even if you don't like fucking uh, Black Sabbath and you hear one of those songs, you're just like, that is the epitome of fucking rock. You know, got married and, uh, you know, was doing that and working every day and you know it just got to be totally boring and fucking just sucked and so my wife started looking in the fucking reader 
found this group looking for a bass player and said they like, you know, heavy stuff and this and that. And she goes, you want to play anymore? You call this fucking ad. You don't call this fucking ad, then you don't want to play no more. You know, when you go up and you fucking play a show and some bitch come running up to you afterward being like, holy fuck, you fucking great, you know? I mean, it's almost like, you know, that's almost, it's satisfaction enough, you know? Even if it's a guy. I love the 20 minute jams. <laughs> <laughs> you got any, uh, anything you wrote? Yeah. You want to <clears throat> Uh, cause if I didn't, I don't know, I'd be so on my way to being a serial killer. <laughs> like, really. Um, and it keeps me cool. Painters, yeah, they're fucking great. But they listen to music while they're painting. And they listen to the crazy shit. Like, they're good. I think. They listen to whatever. But, um, I'm like, God, that's something wrong. But, um, they're gonna listen to music, but I'm not gonna listen to painting one fucking song. <laughs> Now that I know it's great. <laughs> Who are you here to see? H.I.M. Well, I've been listening to them since I was about 13, and it, I related a lot more then when I was like, oh, I angst. It's just inspired me so much in my life. I've gone through so much, and it just kept me going. Their lyrics are just incredible. And Helps you really get through a lot, like depression, and just anything that's really down in your life, you know? If I'm, like, upset, I they, can just, like, listen to them, and it makes me happy. Yeah. Like, I just, like, always paint. So I do my so artwork to them. I love their music, though. I don't know why. It's just... Pretty? It's just like an, a it's natural It's not too instinct. slow and it's not too fast. But they can play a guitar really good. Yeah. Like guitar solos, bass lines. Bass lines match. Yeah, bass lines actually match the chords and stuff. They can play more than one chord. Um, actual good lyrics, not just talking about like crap. I, I don't like top 40 shit. <laughs> and it's just kind of melancholy and when you're in a really shitty mood, it's nice to listen to you. Are you in a shitty mood? No. <laughs> Why do people say sex, drugs, and rock and roll? Probably when it originated in the 80s, from like Motley Crue especially. They were drinking a lot when, the, you know, girls were all over them at all times. Yeah, that's probably why they started saying it. How did you guys hook up? Like uh, I put out an ad in the reader. You guys play pretty heavy stuff? Or? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all into everything I listen to pretty much is heavy. You go from you know, hard rock to black metal. <laughs> Full name is Daniel James Rogie. Uh, I am 20 years old. I will be 21 in February. A lot of music might bring people together or tear people apart. You know, think of how many people might not be friends just because one guy likes Eminem and the other guy is gay, so he hates Eminem. But before that, before Eminem came out, they were friends. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just went to a Manson concert recently and there were protesters outside. You know, they had big posters saying, you know, Jesus will save you and you're going straight to hell for listening to music. Here's the first question. <laughs> yes, it was. Who are you guys here to see? 
Coheed and Cambria. Coheed and Cambria and Fall Out Boy. I usually like music with um, lyrics that I can relate to. So. Um, I say music is like the greatest form of expression. I still teach. It's, it's just so raw, and you can put so much feeling into it. <laughs> Pop rock stars and stuff like that, like they get this huge reputation that like they're so cool, and like everybody just wants to have a part of that. And I guess standing in line makes you <laughs> special. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm only here because she's buying me. Like you're Matching pants, matching pants, we have matching pants. <laughs> we'll be a little late, but I don't think it'll be a big deal. This is the guy that uh, you read his ad last night, and he said he had pro gear, parentheses like Gibson Marshall. And he was gonna come over to my house, but uh, he couldn't move his Marshall half stack. It's 2.11 and we're supposed to be there at 2.30? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, we're supposed to go like I think it might be. It's like an hour to get there. Okay? Yeah. I don't think it'll be a huge deal for late. He didn't sound like he was. I don't know. A whole lot going on today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he didn't sound very. He didn't sound real busy. <laughs> like, like, hey, what are you doing? Nothing. I'm on a jam. I'm not gonna say it's totally bad in Chicago. You know, on the West Coast, you gotta know, like, still uh, white trash people out there. You know, they need it, man. They need, they need rock and roll. Here, we're gonna go to some club and or uh, Lincoln Park or somewhere. It's got a bunch of yuppies. They just, they just walk in there, you know, watch football. That's it, man. They don't, they don't really care about music. Like, why do you think people will like your music? Oh, uh -huh. it's gonna be real, man. From the heart, yeah. Not just a, you know, commercial uh, po pose posters, you know. I'm Jeff Quinn. I'm 22. My day job is managing a front desk at a country club. I think music is a reflection of the culture of society and like what it's thinking. Um, everybody has like their soundtrack in their car or down the street or when they're making something or everything. It's a, I think it's kind of like the fabric that we weave ourselves into and it changes the times. I think my music, ultimately what I'd like it to be is inspiring to people. I hope that you know maybe a guitarist might be like, oh, I kind of want to play it a little bit more or a little bit harder now. Um, and I would hope that it might make people think um, whether they're just cheesing out and spacing out or something to it or you know trying to like write or make art or something I hope that you know it might be a cool atmosphere for it. Rock and roll is like a buzzword I think rock and roll can be um, maybe not accounting but it can be art it can be it's sweaty it's in your face you know that's just like it's electricity and you know I don't think it's just music and you know I think sex can be rock and, and it doesn't even need a soundtrack you know. message in the music, it relates to, to all of us. Uh, I think that sex, drugs, and rock and roll is, is, a, is a connotation that was started by the music industry as, as a ways and the means to sell tickets to concerts and, 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 and hype and boost uh, music products for the industry to make money off of, you know. It could be, it could be, why sex, drugs, and rock and roll, why couldn't it be love and religion and, and, and spirit? What are some of the things a musical artist has to have in order for you guys to like them? Money. Motherfucker, <laughs> class, <laughs> dog. He needs to be unique. He needs to be unique. He needs to be classic. How about you pass that blunt and stop yeah. making Looks wise, she wants to be like a female version of Marilyn Manson. We already got like a whole idea for how the stage thing would go. 
costumes and how the band would be and props and all that. Listen to the song. You cannot play bass. I mean, how am I supposed to sing with just a bass? I mean, yeah. play guitar. I know. Unless we do a, a song that doesn't require a bass riff at all. Like, there's a few I wrote where you really don't need a bass because the bass line would just be in unison with no, the guitar part. No, we're doing part. the first song. I just play the guitar. Alright. I'm just gonna have to do just the rhythm track. Just do the best you can. It's never been rehearsed among the three of us before. So, to do it just point blank without really letting it sink in, it's, it's not gonna sound like the way we wrote it at all. We're not, we're not accenting in the same spots. I can do it to a soundtrack. Yeah. If you want to record that. Yeah. No, I got a soundtrack. Want me to start? My name is Jolanta. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I do various jobs. You know, I don't have like specific job I do. You know. What do, What do you do? Well, right now I'm a waitress. So I'm 26. Let you see and my name is Freddy Frado. That's my real name. It's not a stage name. Um, I actually, uh, right now, I'm keeping uh, hospital equipment in compliance, meaning CAT scans, MRIs, x-rays, all that good stuff. How old are you? 36. Well, first of all, I could be married, I could have a family, I could have kids. You know, if you really want to pursue something like this, you got to leave them aside. You know, look at how many even famous bands have broken up over time because of that. Like, I can think of one right offhand, Journey. What are you looking for in musicians to join your band? Creative. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, even that's secondary. I mean, I could direct them. But um, the main thing is that they have to be psychologically prepared to do what all these other people that are famous have had to do. Yeah. You know, they've, they've had to sign very important, you know, documents. Why do you think none of those, out of those, what would you say, 100 bands? At least 200. Like, is yeah. There a reason, is there a theme behind like uh, why 200 bands didn't work oh, out for Oh, absolutely. And it doesn't have to do with just me. It has to do with everybody in the whole music scene. It's, uh, first of all, no one feels obliged because they don't have to feel obliged. They're not under contract. No one is really doing it the right way, at least in this area. You know, it is different in other parts of the country, but no one is binding themselves to a legal contract, which doesn't make anybody obligated, you know. And uh, it's, it's, it's not the same business like it was. It was, uh, it was a lot more professional 10 years ago. Nowadays, it's like anything goes, say hey, you want to be in a band, can you play, let's hear you. Okay, great, you're in. And then a few months go by, well, we don't really, we'd rather have someone else now because they can do this and you're really not that type of person. It's a matter of being friends without really it being a ban. So, it's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. That's why things are the way they are now. So. Are you filming all this, by the way? Yeah. Okay. So my career is shut down forever. If this ever gets out, I'm doomed. So why, I mean, why would that be? Yeah. Why? Yeah. What am I talking about here? Well, I mean... All right. You were still taping and I didn't know. Is that yeah! Oh. Turn it off! After shutting off the camera, Fred yelled at me like I hadn't been yelled at since I was a little kid. And then he collected his things and left. About ten minutes later, the phone rang. It was Fred. I thought maybe he was calling to apologize. This is Colter. I'm unavailable. Leave me a message and I will call you back as soon as I can. Thank you. Alright, this is all I got left to say to you. You're an immature, unprofessional punk. 
and I better not ever see or hear of you again, all right? I don't have time for bullshit no more. You understand that. Don't have anything to do with me or anything else. And you forget that videotape, too, all right? You don't have any business doing anything in the music business. You're unprofessional, and you're an undisciplined punk. I better not see or ever hear your name or face again. That's all I got to say. So fuck off, dickhead. End of message. I'm becoming a little frustrated and discouraged. Uh, Nick, 41, salesman. What do you sell? Meat. For the last five months, there's been a constant stream of musicians materializing from a 25-word description of their styles, ambitions, and favorite bands into flesh and blood and into noise and opinions. My basic philosophy is to accept the, accept the world and reality the way it is and change whatever few things you can, but kind of a Buddhist type of thing, you know? Except with the sex, drugs, and rock and roll, of course. Uh, I don't do drugs. I'm straight edge, I don't. You should separate like art and music, art and like society in a way, but at the same time, too, it's all combined. What was the original question? Completely unable to decipher the link between the ads I call from the paper and who shows up in my living room. I've decided it's time to change tactics and put an ad out myself, listing some of my favorite bands and practice goals to more accurately and effectively find like-minded people. Belle and the Bow have the best lyrics. Yeah. Belvin DeVoe does? Belvin DeVoe is the best lyric of all time. Which is, is what? I'll do the spoken words that's even funnier. It says, Yo, Ron, what's up with that fly girl you left the jam with? She's sticking closer to you than the bread on the meat of my sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best fucking lyric ever. We're also, we're also discussing like the, the lyrics on uh, I'm the Type of Guy by LL Cool J, how that's like the longest burn ever. It's just like a super long burn. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, just on just like some guy who's... He's, he's nailing his own lady. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, nailing, he's nailing this guy's girlfriend. Like, right. you think you're, you think she's your girl and all that, you keep believing it, you go to work while I defrost it and season it. <laughs> oh, man. Look at this guy. Oh, man. People are impressionable due to what some rock singer says. That's, they have their own issues. I think. And well, here's a question: Why do you think people give so much validity to things that like celebrities and rock stars have to say? Like they're not particularly educated on the issues. Why don't they? You know what I mean? Whether it's like, what does so and so think about world hunger? It's like, you know, why does we have somebody that knows? You know, like why do they care what the bass player from Green Day thinks? Why? why do they worry I, about I, I think it has a lot to do with the whole same thing with like when you have like a, a daughter who's an upcoming actress and the, their mother's the failed actress. It's the whole like living through the eyes of someone you want to be. I think that's why they give them so much credit because they're not, they're so brain dead that they can't think it up themselves. They're gonna do whatever Bono tells them or whatever Oprah tells them or whatever, you know? That's one thing I really don't like about art and like painters and stuff like that. I'm not saying that they're all like this, but a lot of people just hop on the bandwagon and slap a bunch of paint on, they don't even do anything. They're just like, Bleh. and a lot of people don't realize that it's shit. They think that if they say it's shit, they're not gonna be cool. So they go, well, Oh, I, I, do you feel the emotion? Like, they just make up shit. They're like, oh, do you feel the emotion? Or, like, a lot of people hop on the bandwagon when it comes to that and when it comes to music. It, it may sound weird, like, I don't think that deeply about music. It's, it's just something that I, I ha like, I do and I just, like, I have to do it because I don't feel normal without it. Like, all these, all, I'm sorry, but, like, you know, like, all, all these questions about, like, society and, like, the way they're going to react to it, I, I don't have an answer for that. Because nobody wants to be a fucking accountant. No one wants to be a painter. You know what I mean? Like painters are fucking douchebags. Like not like not like they're a bunch of assholes, but like you've seen them, man. Like you know, like painters are just those fucking 
you know, those are dreary, weepy boys in the back of the coffee shop, you know what I mean? A fucking, you know, a captain, you know? He was an ROTC in high school, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, they're no fun. Rock stars are great, man. They get to go out and you play shows and you hang out. Chicks dig you, guys dig you, guys want to be you, chicks want to fuck you, you know, or they want to kill you. But, like, either way, it's an exciting lifestyle. Either they hate you or they love you. So everyone says sex, drugs, and rock and roll, because it's all dangerous. It's all dangerous in one way. It's all excess, and it's all available to you. This is something that I can do. That I, that I this is like a world that I have that you guys will never understand. You no, know? and that's uh, that's play music, and I and I would never you know. Like I would never change that. Who are you here to see? I see you. And uh, Project Edman. Dory G.I. You're not here to see Vanilla Ice? I, I guess. I like Vanilla Ice. How come, how come you're I all like embarrassed about it? How come you're like ICP but you don't well, see Vanilla Ice? Because I like Vanilla Ice. I'll admit it. I'm not afraid to say it. Some of the things that you feel nobody else can like feel the way you do about they kind of hit home for us. Well, they got to relate to you and their like type of life. They got to reach out and touch you, say something that you can relate to, and basically make you feel good about yourself. Well, he got to be for real. If he talking about some dirt that he been doing, he had to have done that shit. You know what I'm saying? If he like, you know, I'm raw and I beat motherfuckers ass on the street, and that's what he rapping about, and he got to do that. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I, you know, I don't like listening to no motherfuckers that's like saying shit that sound nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, some Jay-Z shit or something like that. How the nigga gonna talk shit with 15 bodyguards, you know what I'm saying? This music is a way to express yourself and how you feel, like I said. Just so is a painting, though. Is just so, well, is, so is ceramic pottery making. Maybe it's because like, they can actually hear the word instead of seeing it on a paper and uh, trying to distinguish it themselves. People can relate to music more than they can to a painting. I mean, you can, I mean people can visualize a, f a painting up on the wall and they can, they can uh, yeah, I can relate to that. But music, that I mean, how many paintings are there compared to songs in the world? See, so it's a fucking nerd. Why not? What? Uh, why do people say sex, drugs, and rock and roll? Why don't they say sex, drugs, and accounting, or sex, drugs, and painting? Because that's an ideology of society. That ain't why, my why is it that way? Why is it that way, though? That because that's how they made it. That's how the, people went back in the day. I don't even know because I wasn't born right there. That's how. That's how people made it since the dawn of time. Well, at least since the dawn of civilization. Because, well, at least the dawn of rock. But. It's somebody's ideology that they force upon everybody else. That's not mine. Mine's not sex, drug, and rock and roll. Somebody's having a good time. Sometimes I want to mix in some of the bad stuff with it. And, you know, that's... That sucks. How's it going, cameraman? There's the Vic and the Riviera like, right up the street from here. So, like, whatever band is playing, like sort of clones of that band sort of inundate our neighborhood. So like like Franz Ferdinand, it's like a real like young demographic, you know? Like everybody that was like waiting in line like they're like they were fresh out of high school. Yeah, I totally enjoy watching a high school line of kids. Like you know like this tall, like weight 100 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, oh God. dude. Like, there'll be like a bunch of kids there just like, you know, looking cool and everything, and then there'll be like one group, and then there'll be like the overprotective mom that's like hanging out in the line, like, <laughs> sort of, like scowling at everyone. And you can tell like all the kids with her are just like, oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> Joel Knapp, 26, I work for a railroad. I'm Tony. Uh, 26, I work in a bar. What are you into besides music? Fucking. Yeah. My name's Mike, I'm 20, and I work at a fitness center. Well, are you just a singer? Or you, yep. you, I saw you tinker on the guitar. Well, I'm also a very funny and uh, attractive, so it's I'm a triple threat. All right. I think you, you you can change an individual, you know, from having a bad day, bad day to a good day a little bit if you write a good tune. Tommy, Mike, and Joel seemed like a fun group of guys, and I enjoyed the music that we were playing. We decided to set up a schedule to practice. 
They always tell you in class not to look at the camera, but it's really effing hard. <laughs> Check. Does that sound, uh, I don't know, anything? I don't know. Uh, he hasn't come too far for three months, I don't think. Uh, I thought Joel's a little stiff. He's still kind of stiff. Uh, Coulter's a pretty cool cat. Um, uh, Mike's kid. He's, I think he's what, 12 or 13? I mean, we could be good. We just gotta practice. As far as the band, I mean, it's, it's going on the schedule, and you know, look at that. I'm not too worried about that. I think we're coming together a bit more. I think we definitely need a bass player. This is great. Yeah. Whose place is this? My Colton. Oh, is it? Oh, right Colin, right? I know you're Joel. Damn right you do. <laughs> and your name is like... Coulter. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I've heard worse. <laughs> Yeah, everybody. Alright. Thanks again, guys. Yeah. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Hey, bye. You leaving? No, he is. Oh. <laughs> hey, he's a guy. He's a nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm not really interested in seeing other people, you know what I mean? Like, if this girl isn't perfect, I don't know what is. Yeah, totally. Mike came and found me, asked me to try out. It's been, what, two months now? Music's the one interest that has been a constant in my life. Other interests come and go. Music has always been there for me. I like it. I like what it a lot. It used to be. If I can tore that fucker down because they're expanding the train thing here. It used to be a really cool bar. That's a bar, dude? Right That's sketchy. Here, the perfect frontman right here coming in on my camera saying <laughs> Now that we had all the members of the band together, the next steps were to get my electricity turned back on, record a demo and get some shows. I've met a lot of people along the way. I'll remain friends with some, and others I'll pretend not to recognize when I see in public. Although most of my encounters with musicians did not extend beyond the first meetings, I've learned from their views and their perspectives, whether it was through changing my mind or reaffirming my own beliefs. They've made me see things from a different angle and helped me understand what I'm looking for and how to get there. From making my first call from the classified ads to playing my first show with my new band took a little under eight months. We have several shows scheduled for around the Chicago area. For now, I'm playing in a band and having a lot of fun. But the way these things work, you never know. I could be back calling numbers from the classified ads tomorrow.
First of all, I'm going to LA, man. <laughs> yeah, I know what you, what you mean. Yeah, I'm going to play music. I'm not looking to be famous or a rock star, make a ton of money. I'm more looking to um, give people a good time, just for a little while, earn their money. Uh, number one album. Maybe two of them by then. Five years? Yeah, sure. <coughs> Why not? I like to keep my hair and not get fat. So, if, does that count? Five years, I hope to be a signed band and touring. And hope to be, you know, building a name. That's where I'd really like to be. Nothing else. I, I play music. Like, a, a, as, as like a, as like a passion, a, a hobby. Like, I, I I, it's it's so hard. You can't make a living out of it, you know. It's just you can't. So like in five years, if you ask me in general, I would I would most likely be uh, kind of uh, you know uh, working on my career. I hope to be very successful in five years. But if not, oh well. I just keep trying till the end. <laughs> I'll give her ten years. She's got 10 years. No, I got more than that. Say. I'm not giving myself any time, but I just hope to be successful in the future. Practice, I mean, my thing is practice a lot. Five years, I hope to be touring in a van or a bus if that'd be possible. Um, just around the US, just playing music. Living in LA, man, you know, driving a convertible. 